satellite link from Rome. Yes, the declaration explicitly made the environment the responsibility of human beings and to support all efforts made to protect God's creation. The ecumenical patriarch continues to play his primary role in the broader orthodox community always furthering his environmental message. Here in Kiev, the capital of the Ukraine, His All Holiness leads a liturgy assisted by Patriarch Alexei of the Russian Orthodox Church. This divine liturgy celebrated the 1,020th anniversary of the founding of Orthodoxy in Kiev. The Patriarch is reaching out to all spiritual leaders, not only those who had Christian religion. How are you? I'm very well. He's drawing in very senior leaders from a diversity of religious traditions and really creating a forum where they're able not only to speak with scientists and people in the development community and people concerned with uh, human rights and social equity, but they're also able to speak among themselves and to compare and contrast some of the approaches each of the faiths can bring to the environment issue. In Paris, he spoke so strongly about Islamic tradition in protecting the environment. And coming from a orthodox patriarch, that was very important. When we hear people from different religious orders speaking about other religions in a very positive manner, in an open manner. And uh, he does that, I've seen him. In the Amazon, the Patriarch took the unprecedented step of inviting indigenous people to join him, an act criticized by some of his own followers. Centuries ago, the arrival of European conquerors decimated the indigenous populations, dismissed their spiritual beliefs, enslaved them and converted them to Catholicism, sometimes forcibly. On this occasion, however, the Patriarch made it possible for shamans to stand side by side with Orthodox Christians, Catholics and Protestants. They were very happy and satisfied that we respected them and their traditions. The view of this native Amazonian Indian to blast a guy from the Catholic Church like he did today with grace and kindness was so powerful because this is a representative of an institution that signified their suffering for 500 years. And now this guy here comes there, very symbolic, in the Amazon River, and blasts the, the representative of the church. In the last analysis, it was uh, proved that we need each other. They need our advanced science and development, and we need their traditions and uh, their closeness to the creation of God. The Patriarch has been championing the environment for almost two decades now. The long years of effort are paying off. The Green Patriarch can now count numerous success stories. The spotlight the Patriarch put on Porto Romano has helped persuade the World Bank to spend $5 million to clean up the toxic chemical site. One could argue 
that that would never have happened if the symposium hadn't visited the place and embarrassed the president into taking some action. In Brazil, the patriarch connected scientist Antonio Nobre with environmentalist Gerard Moss. Together, they created a project that involves measuring the water-bearing air currents high above the Amazon rainforest, currents they call flying rivers. You could test and check how the Amazon is pumping water vapor in the air, and this gets carried away through on the wind and brought to the areas that otherwise would be desert. And this project is now taking off, and it will be a series of programs in the Brazilian TV. The Patriarch's visit to the Baltic inspired Bread and Fish, an organization of farmers, fishermen, and government leaders that hopes to restore the devastated fish stocks by continuing the communication and cooperation started by the Patriarch. He is, has been able, with his moral authority, to create a dialogue and create a new movement. To have religion become partner with nature and partner with people, and to have the real roots of religion kept alive for being a savior of humanity and nature rather than a threat to humanity and nature, a source of love and compassion rather than a source of hate and intolerance. Uh, for me, it's, it's like oxygen. You have only one planet. This is a very delicate environmental balance that we live within. It's, you know, it's probably one of the reasons why many of us are religious, because we have something here in this ecosystem of ours, which um, is so extraordinary. It's hard not to believe that some greater power than ourselves had something to do with this. Though the Patriarch has accomplished a great deal, more needs to be done. Scientists tell us we have less than 10 years to curb greenhouse gases and limit global warming. Otherwise, it will be too late. We're going to lose unless someone can bring massive numbers of people into the discussion. And I believe that the best way to do that is going to be the religious community. We, people of religion, uh, have to inspire more and more our faithful to give them a good example. If we have arrived in this critical point uh, today, it means that we, uh, representatives of religion, did not fulfill our mission. We need moral leadership. People are feeling this urgency as never before. The awareness has arisen about climate change, about a whole range of issues, species extinction, pollution, and so on. We must respond as religious people to this critical moment. And I think we have now that possibility, and in large measure because of the early and consistent and authentic leadership of His All Holiness Bartholomew. Now that religion is here and bringing the moral message, things will start to change. This is what happened with the slavery issue. This is what happened with civil rights. As Orthodox Christians, we use the Greek keros to describe a moment in time which has eternal significance. For the human race as a whole, there is now a keros, a decisive time in our relationship with God's creation. We will either act in time to protect life on earth from the worst consequences of human folly, or we will fail to act. May God bless.
grant us the wisdom to act in time. On a cloudy September day, a passenger ship cut through the waters of the Arctic Ocean off the coast of Greenland. On the deck, the ecumenical patriarch gathered religious leaders from nearly a dozen different doctrines. They stood silent, each in his or her own way, sending a prayer to the infinite.